Welcome to Motive Emistery, where the wisdom of the ages meets the challenges of today. In today's exploration, we delve into the life and intellect of Roland Barthes, a prominent French philosopher, literary critic, and semiotician. Born in 1915 in Cherbourg, Barthes became a leading figure in the fields of structuralism and post-structuralism. Raised in a world recovering from the ravages of World War I, Barth's early life was marked by personal loss and health challenges. Despite this, he pursued higher education, eventually becoming a seminal thinker in literary theory and criticism. Barth's works, such as Mythologies and Camera Lucida, revolutionized the way we interpret cultural phenomena and texts. His unique insights into the nature of language, science, and symbols in popular culture have greatly influenced modern critical theory. Known for his incisive analysis and the ability to dissect the ordinary to reveal the layers of meaning beneath, Barth's contributions extend beyond literary criticism to philosophy, anthropology, and sociology. Throughout his career, Barth grappled with the complexities of signification, authorship, and the role of the reader, leading to groundbreaking concepts like the death of the author. His legacy endures in the way we understand and engage with media, literature, and culture. I am interested in language because it wounds or seduces me. This quote speaks to the powerful impact language has on emotions, highlighting its ability to deeply affect us either positively or negatively. It underscores the dual nature of language as a tool for expression that can both harm and enchant, reflecting the complexities of communication. In our current era of digital communication, this quote is particularly relevant reminding us of the power of words and their enduring impact on relationships and self-perception. Am I in love? Yes, since I am waiting. The other one never waits. Sometimes I want to play the part of the one who doesn't wait. I try to busy myself elsewhere, to arrive late, but I always lose at this game. Whatever I do, I find myself there, with nothing to do, punctual, even ahead of time. The lover's fatal identity is precisely this. I am the one who waits. This quote explores the emotional dynamics of waiting in love, highlighting the often uneven distribution of longing and anticipation in relationships. It reflects on the introspective nature of love and the longing that often accompanies it, symbolizing the patience and vulnerability inherent in being in love. In an age where instant gratification is prevalent, this quote offers a poignant reminder of the depth and complexity of love where waiting becomes an integral, albeit challenging, part of the experience. Each of us has his own rhythm of suffering. This quote speaks to the individuality of the human experience, particularly in the context of pain and suffering. It acknowledges that each person endures and processes suffering in their unique way, respecting the diversity of emotional experiences. In a world where mental health is becoming a central concern, this quote resonates by emphasizing the importance of recognizing and respecting individual emotional journeys. Language is a skin. I rub my language against the other. It is as if I had words instead of fingers, or fingers at the tip of my words. My language trembles with desire. This quote encapsulates the tactile, almost physical quality of language and its capacity to express deep desires and emotions. It suggests an intimate connection between language and sensation, where words can almost touch and evoke visceral responses. In our digital age, this quote reminds us of the power of language to connect deeply with others, transcending physical boundaries. The scene consecrates the object of love, love at first sight, already a memory, an accident of desire. In this moment, all desires are abolished, definitively fulfilled. This quote reflects on the ephemeral and transformative nature of love at first sight, where a single moment can consecrate a lifetime of emotions. It portrays love as a fleeting, yet profound experience that can satisfy all desires instantaneously, leaving a lasting memory. In a culture increasingly focused on fleeting connections, this quote emphasizes the depth and intensity of instant emotional connections. As a jealous man, I suffer four times over, because I am jealous, because I blame myself for being so, because I fear that my jealousy will wound the other, because I allow myself to be subject to a banality. I suffer from being excluded, from being aggressive, from being crazy, and from being common. 
This quote delves into the complex and multifaceted nature of jealousy, highlighting its self-perpetuating and destructive qualities. It captures the internal conflict and turmoil caused by jealousy, from self-blame to the fear of hurting others. In an age where relationships are often complicated and multifaceted, this quote resonates with the universal struggle of managing complex emotions. I encounter millions of bodies in my life. Of these millions, I may desire some hundreds, but of these hundreds, I love only one. This quote reflects on the rarity and uniqueness of true love amidst the multitude of human connections we experience. It highlights the distinction between physical desire and deep emotional love, emphasizing the singular nature of profound affection. In a world where superficial relationships are common, this quote resonates with the quest for genuine, singular love. Language is a skin. I rub my language against the other. My language trembles with desire. I enwrap the other in my words. I caress, brush against, talk up this contact. I extend myself to make the commentary to which I submit the relation endure. This quote poetically describes the intimate and evocative power of language in human interactions. It suggests that language is not just a tool for communication, but a medium for emotional connection and expression. This quote resonates with anyone who values the depth and nuance of words in expressing and connecting with others. To know that one does not write for the other, to know that these things I am going to write will never cause me to be loved by the one I love, the other, to know that writing compensates for nothing, sublimates nothing, that it is precisely there where you are not this is the beginning of writing. This quote delves into the existential nature of writing, highlighting its intrinsic value independent of external validation. It suggests that writing is an act of self-expression and introspection, not necessarily meant to gain approval or love from others. This quote is particularly resonant for writers and artists who embrace the solitary journey of creation, acknowledging that the true essence of their work lies within. Someone tells me, this kind of love is not viable. But how can you evaluate viability? Why is the viable a good thing? Why is it better to last than to burn? This quote questions the conventional norms of love, challenging the idea that longevity is the sole indicator of a relationship's success. It provokes thought about the nature of love and the societal expectations that dictate its viability. This quote resonates with those who believe in the value of intense, passionate relationships, regardless of their duration. Ultimately or at the limit in order to see a photograph well, it is best to look away or close your eyes. The necessary condition for an image is sight, Jan Ouch told Kafka, and Kafka smiled and replied, we photograph things in order to drive them out of our minds. My stories are a way of shutting my eyes. This quote reflects on the paradoxical nature of photography and storytelling, where capturing an image or writing a narrative can both preserve and erase memories. It suggests that sometimes detachment or closure is needed to truly see or understand an experience. This quote appeals to those who contemplate the deeper meanings behind capturing moments and the art of letting go. What the photograph reproduces to infinity has occurred only once. The photograph mechanically repeats what could never be repeated existentially. This quote delves into the unique ability of photographs to replicate a singular moment in time endlessly. It emphasizes the distinction between the mechanical reproduction of an image and the lived experience it represents. This quote is thought-provoking for those who ponder the relationship between reality and its representation. To whom could I put this question? With any hope of an answer, does being able to live without someone you loved mean you loved her less than you thought? This quote reflects on the nature of love and loss, questioning the depth of love based on one's ability to move on. It challenges the conventional measure of love's intensity, suggesting that the ability to live without a loved one doesn't necessarily equate to loving them less. The quote resonates with those who grapple with the complexities of love, grief, and moving forward. To try to write love is to confront the muck of language, that region of hysteria where language is both too much and too little, excessive, by the limitless expansion of the ego, by emotive submersion, and impoverished, by the codes on which love diminishes and levels it, this quote delves into the inherent limitations and excesses of language when attempting to express the complex emotion of love. 
It highlights the struggle of capturing the essence of love in words, which often fall short or become exaggerated. The quote appeals to those interested in the intersection of language, emotion, and expression. Language is never innocent. This quote asserts that language always carries underlying meanings, biases, and implications beyond its literal sense. It suggests that language is a powerful tool that shapes thought, perception, and society, often in subtle and unnoticed ways. This quote is particularly engaging for those who analyze the influence and responsibility of language in communication and culture. The lover's fatal identity is precisely this, I am the one who waits. This quote encapsulates the essence of the lover's role as one who waits, embodying both hope and vulnerability. It speaks to the emotional state of longing and the power dynamics in romantic relationships. The quote resonates with those who have experienced the anticipation and anxiety of waiting for love. Don't say mourning. It's too psychoanalytic. I'm not mourning. I'm suffering. This quote challenges the psychoanalytic interpretation of grief, emphasizing the raw, personal experience of suffering. It distinguishes between the clinical concept of mourning and the individual's felt experience of pain. This quote appeals to those exploring the depths of human emotion and the complexities of grief. The bastard form of mass culture is humiliated repetition. Always new books, new programs, new films, news items, but always the same meaning. This quote criticizes the redundant nature of mass culture, highlighting its lack of originality and depth. It suggests that despite the constant influx of new content, the underlying messages and themes remain unchanged and superficial. The quote is particularly relevant to those interested in media studies and cultural criticism. For me the noise of time is not sad, I love bells, clocks, watches and I recall that at first photographic implements were related to techniques of cabinet making and the machinery of precision, cameras, in short, were clocks for seeing, and perhaps in me someone very old still hears in the photographic mechanism the living sound of the wood. This quote reflects Barth's fascination with the passage of time and its representation through mechanical devices. It connects photography to the precision of clockwork, suggesting a nostalgic relationship with technology. This quote will resonate with those interested in the intersection of art, technology, and memory. We know that the war against intelligence is always waged in the name of common sense. This quote critiques how appeals to common sense are often used to suppress intellectual discourse and critical thinking. It suggests a conflict between populist notions and intellectual rigor. This quote is relevant for those exploring the dynamics of knowledge, power, and society. Is not the most erotic portion of a body where the garment gapes? It is intermittence, as psychoanalysis has so rightly stated, which is erotic the intermittence of skin flashing between two articles of clothing. It is this flash itself which seduces, or rather, the staging of an appearance as disappearance. This quote delves into the concept of eroticism in fashion and the human body, emphasizing the allure of what is partially hidden. It highlights the psychological aspect of desire and the power of suggestion. This quote will engage those interested in fashion, psychology, and the philosophy of desire. When we define the photograph as a motionless image, this does not mean only that the figures it represents do not move, it means that they do not, I, emerge, I, do not, I, leave, I, they are anesthetized and fastened down, like butterflies. This quote contemplates the nature of photography, emphasizing its ability to capture and immobilize moments in time. It suggests a paradoxical sense of life and stillness within the photographic medium. Ideal for those interested in photography, art, and the concept of time. If I acknowledge my dependency, I do so because for me it is a means of signifying my demand. In the realm of love, futility is not a weakness or an absurdity. It is a strong sign. The more futile, the more it signifies and the more it asserts itself as strength. This quote explores the complexities of love and dependency, challenging traditional notions of strength and futility. It highlights the power of vulnerability in emotional relationships. Relevant for those exploring themes of love, psychology, and human interaction. I can do everything with my language, but not with my body. 
What I hide by my language, my body utters. By my voice, whatever it says, the other will recognize that something is wrong with me. My body is a stubborn child. My language is a very civilized adult. This quote reflects on the disconnect between language and physical expression, highlighting the limitations and revelations of the body and speech. It delves into the concept of self-expression and the struggle to convey inner feelings accurately. Suitable for discussions on linguistics, psychology, and the philosophy of self. The book creates meaning, the meaning creates life. This quote reflects on the profound impact of literature in shaping understanding and existence. It emphasizes the transformative power of reading and interpretation. Ideal for discussions on the role of literature in human life and culture. The photograph is literally an emanation of the referent. From a real body, which was there, proceed radiations which ultimately touch me, who am here, the duration of the transmission is insignificant. The photograph of the missing being, as Sontag says, will touch me like the delayed rays of a star. This quote explores the philosophical and emotional depth of photography as a medium. It delves into the relationship between the photograph and the reality it represents. Relevant for those interested in photography, art, and memory. I make the other's absence responsible for my worldliness. This quote delves into the impact of absence on one's perception and engagement with the world. It reflects on how the absence of others shapes our own identity and worldly interactions. Suitable for discussions on relationships, identity, and existentialism. Isn't the most sensitive point of this morning the fact that I must lose a language the amorous language? No more I love yous. This quote expresses the loss felt when love ends, especially the inability to express affection. It captures the void left by the absence of romantic expressions. Relevant for discussions on love, loss, and the impact of language in relationships. We were friends, now estranged. Like two ships with different courses. Perhaps we shall never meet again, changed by different seas and suns. This quote reflects on the evolution and dissolution of relationships over time. It symbolizes the natural drift apart in life's journey. Ideal for discussions on friendship, change, and life's paths. To make someone wait, the constant prerogative of all power, age-old pastime of humanity. This quote critiques the dynamics of power and control in human interactions. It highlights how making others wait can be a display of dominance. Suitable for discussions on power, control, and societal behavior. Appreciation for joining our journey.